moved 15,000 kilometers across the world to Orlando, Florida, and now that I'm here, I can finally set up my dream Lego room. A year ago, I made a detailed plan of everything that I wanted to do, and now it's finally time to bring that to life with five main steps. Step one, furniture. Step two, shelves. Step three, a desk. Step four, lighting. And step five, artwork. And once this project's done, I'm gonna hopefully have created a really cozy, inviting, practical, and cool looking space for myself. So let's get started. Picking the furniture was by far the most important aspect for me to get done first because without furniture there was no way for me to store or display any of my things and in my case too I want this room to function as a Lego room a filming studio and an office all at the same time so with that in mind I wanted to keep a really simple but functional layout in my old room I loved my old Ikea Billy bookcase but I have said for a while that I regret getting the black I don't know I just feel like it didn't match the rest of my furniture and in a lot of cases if a set was made out of gray or black bricks it often and got lost on the shelf. And I also tried to install lights in that old bookcase using just an LED strip and the whole thing just kind of looked very messy. So my first order of business was to go to Ikea and get a couple more of those Billy shelves and get them all built. Since I have more wall space in this room, I could get a couple of extra bookcases, but I didn't want to overdo it. So I ended up getting two of the wider ones and then one of the skinny one. So I could have a couple of different sizes just to mix it up a little bit. Now, as for installing lighting into these shelves, this is something that has taken me years to figure out. And after watching a bunch of videos where people cut holes on the shelves, I realized that I could just stick them on the inside of the door frame, just like I did with the other lights in my old Billy bookcase, but the only thing I needed to change up was the way that I actually wired it. It turns out after all this time, all I needed to do was have one light strip per door instead of one for the entire bookcase. In my particular bookcases, I was able to feed an extension cord right up the back of the bookcases and put a power board so that all of the plugs are on the top. And something else I really wanted to have in this room was a day bed. Now I have been set on the specific one from Ikea for quite a while and I figured it would be the perfect sort of combo piece in a room like this. Because that way I can extend it into a double bed if anyone ever needs to sleep on it or use it as a couch if I wanted to sit down and read or edit. I also find it to be the perfect place to store my squishmallows and then as for the sheets and the pillows, I just bought them off Amazon. With the wall of shelves complete, the next thing to do was fill them and style them. And there were two main reasons why I wanted to do this. Firstly, I wanted to have a fun video background, but more than that, I felt that if I filled up the shelves and started to put some of my belongings around me, it would start to feel a little bit more like home. Because even though I bought the exact same style of shelf, just in a different color, I feel like it was still too new and I needed to have something that was a little bit more familiar around me. And when it comes to shelf styling, I am a strong believer in the thought that there is a thing such as too much Lego. I know it's a joke, but there is nothing worse to me than an overcluttered shelf. Luckily for me though, there was only so many Lego sets I could fit within my suitcases in order to move. So I don't actually have a ton of Lego on me right now. And I feel like it's gonna be fun because at least it means I can build up my collection and my display over time. But even with a limited collection on hand, I wanted to get some stands in order to make the shelf just look far more interesting. I got some specialty stands from Bricksessories so that I could make my Star Wars ships look like they're actually flying through the sky or in the case of Ahsoka's T6 shuttle, actually stand up. This is my favorite way to make your display feel a little bit more put together because it also helps fill the vertical space and allows you to put a couple more things on your shelf. In my original plan, I was inspired by my friend Nikki Bricks who had this full little micro fighter set up. So when I saw Brick Accessories had a stand for micro fighters, I thought it would be really fun to put my brand new Captain Rex's Y-Wing on one. Because when I was planning my shelves, I wanted to have everything divided by theme and then by sub theme. So I was putting together this little Clone Wars shelf and having Captain Rex's Y-Wing fly alongside a lot of my other Ahsoka and Clone Wars sets looks really, really sick. And the last thing I got from them was an acrylic display case for my Little Mermaid Atlantica Princess Castle. And these acrylic display cases are really good if you plan on having a lot of natural light in your room, which is personally something that I do like having because they help protect from not just dust, but UV. And that basically means that your sets of minifigures aren't going to yellow in the sun very much, if at all, which is fantastic for me because I really wanna have a lot of daylight during the day. If you wanna check out Bricksessories, you can use code Holly on film, and I'll leave a link in the description down below if you wanted to browse their cases and their stands and just their entire range. They're also a US-based company, so if you live in North America, their shipping prices and time frame are incredibly reasonable. So now that the set's on the stand, I wanna go and find a good spot for it on my shelf, because I've got a specific Rebels shelf, but I feel like because of the height and the size of this thing, it would look better somewhere else, and I kind of just have a bunch of miscellaneous shelves on the bottom of this corner unit at the moment, which I'm not totally happy with. On the stand, the shuttle is a little too tall to put on this shelf, which is where I ideally would have it. I mean, I could 
theoretically move this down one, but I feel like for now, I'm just gonna put this on the bottom. I'm gonna take out the Dumbstrung ship just because it is so tall. Like I had to take off this entire top section just to fit it in the shelf to begin with. It is just so space hungry and I don't think I want to dedicate that much space to it as gorgeous as this set is. In order to have the room function as both an office and a filming studio, I really wanted to upgrade and get a standing desk. When I first moved, I had a hand-me-down white Ikea desk, which has been really, really great. However, it was a little bit too small. So thanks to Amazon Prime Day, I finally picked up a standing desk and it is firstly so much deeper. Now that my new desk is built, I've started to take apart my old one. However, I realized that I threw away, stupidly, one of the tools that I actually needed to take it down. So I ordered an Allen key set off Amazon so I can finally take apart the last little bit. So with the second desk gone, everything is now sorted and I can use my standing desk as both like a sit down desk and a nice filming table to put right here. Which for that, I'll just unplug it and literally drag it across the floor. With a lot of the main setup done now, I need to fix the one major flaw that this room has and that is the lighting situation. During the day, it's fine because I have some nice curtains and a big window that lets a lot of daylight in, but as soon as the sun sets, I really don't have a lot going for me besides my filming lights and the lights in the bookcase. There's one light in the ceiling, which is honestly pretty dull and it has a little bit of a flickering effect, but I'm also that type of person that doesn't want to use the big light. I like having other lights on. One of the first things I want to do with upgrading is hang up my like nano leaf lines that I have. Like you might remember them from my old bedroom. I had a set and then nano leaf this year sent me another set for May the 4th. So I left them pretty much intact so I could bring them with me. Because currently the sun is starting to set. It is 7.15 and it's really dark in here. A lamp would be pretty cool in the corner too, but like I have these lights so I'm going to utilize them instead. The lines go a long way in increasing the room's overall coziness feeling and I Ideally, I would like to have another lamp. I just don't know where I would put it at this point. This is so much better. Last step is to add some art. I have been dying to do this for ages because I feel like it makes everything feel a little bit more personalized. And right now the walls look so bad. I ended up getting some tiny little acrylic shelves just to try out to see if this was actually going to be helpful and kind of like displaying things and scattering the pictures out. But I feel like just in general, I should scatter them just so that it doesn't look so static. But I'm also kind of scared that I'm not gonna get this level. Ultimately, if I stuff it up, it's all on command strip so I can just pull it down and start again. One down, and that is the most important one in my eyes. I tried to leave a little bit of space in case I wanted to hang up my celebration lanyard. I don't know, does that look too messy? I don't know. I want to hang this up, but I just don't know where. But I am at least very happy with my wall art. So I've been thinking, especially now that I've got my wall art up, I have been debating switching around the Clone Wars shelf to be where the Hobbit house is because then all of my Star Wars stuff is like mostly a little bit higher up and that way I kind of have like a full Padme Amidala shrine going on. And a large part of that is because my Queen Amidala dolls at the top so I would kind of like to have everything a little bit more condensed. But not only that, I actually think that this shelf here is a little bit taller and then I think the space between the top of the Hobbit house on the bottom shelf would look nice. I don't think this makes any sense. Upon further inspection, I actually think this shelf height might be the exact same just because of how much of a gap there is between Hobbiton. Oh well, I guess this is what we're gonna do. I'm sure Bag End looks fine. Having both the prequels and the Clone Wars is a really good thing because it also nicely ties in with my Rebels shelf that I've got going alongside all of the Queen Amidala stuff at the top. I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. I'm a much bigger fan of this setup. So just like that, the room is complete and I'm sure that it's going to continue to grow and evolve and change over the time that I stay here. And I'm just so glad that I could create such a happy, warm and inviting space for myself to be in. I'll do a fully fledged room tour very soon, but for now, this is my dream Lego room and I am incredibly proud of this space.